Alright guys, welcome back to Formula 1 News. I was not planning to do another video today, but we simply have to with what has just transpired to are qualifying for the Brazilian Grand Prix. Gonna break down exactly the chain of events that managed to make Kevin Magnussen take his first and has his first ever pole position in Formula 1 and what this means for the rest of the weekend. Very much into your thoughts in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. I would greatly appreciate it. It really helps out the channel. Thanks very much indeed for doing that. What's an image? What scenes? Like, who is not happy for... This man and Haas getting a pole position. What a crazy story, especially because Mr. Magnussen was not even on the grid at the start of the season. Nikita Mazepin, after all the drama that went down there, Magnussen comes through, last minute replacement, wasn't even expecting to be driving this year for Haas, got the last minute call up. He thought, I imagine, his Formula 1 crew was done and dusted. And now here he is, the penultimate race of the season, snagging pole position. What a, you know, what great pictures. I thought it was awesome that uh, Gunter Steiner goes around, hugs every single member of the team after this one, because look, this was not just luck. This was great execution on Magnussen's part, but also on the part of Haas. Let's talk how qualifying transpired, because I thought, damn, Q1 was fantastic. It was initially Inters, many different drivers were going fastest, Alonso was sticking at P1, Hamilton went P1, Norris went P1, then Gasly went P1 by a margin after he stuck on the softs, and finally the grip was there in the middle sector. It was raining before qualifying began, then it was kind of inevitably going to go to slicks at some point. It did, then the guys went quicker when they were on the slicks. There was some fire Final laps that had to be put in by some of the guys. You know, Hamilton, I think, was P18, P19, had to stick in a good lap, went P1. Norris eventually got P1 in the session, though. And Latifi, despite initially also, I think Latifi was also briefly P1 as well here. Joe and Bottas, Sonoda and Schumacher all out. This is notable. Mick Schumacher P20. There is a bit of a Hass sandwich going on right now on this grid that we'll see here in a second. But yeah, both Alphas out. I think Bottas maybe made the wrong call on. The Inters maybe stayed on the Inters a bit too long before before going on to the softs. This was the classification after FB, after Q1, sorry. Exciting stuff, right? Norris, Hamilton, Alonso, Vettel, Perez was the way this started. But Magnussen at P7, right? Notable, because Magnussen was not slugging around in these sessions and barely making it through. He, you know, had a great time here on those softs towards the ends. Then Q2 was a bit of a messy one. George Russell was on the radio saying, guys, it's raining. We need to get some new tires on and do some laps now, because I think Mercedes were concerned if they didn't, they would miss out on the good running. Turns out towards the end of Q2 there seemed to be a bit of better running available but in the end uh, the kind of top guys make it through to Q3 regardless. Albon misses out by the, the smallest of margins. Gasly, Vettel, Ricardo, and Stroll. Those were the five drivers eliminated. Then this was the key point. The teams knew the rain was coming. They went out on the slick tyres with the exception of one team. I honestly can't believe it. We'll discuss that in a second though. You can actually see on the cars. So Magnussen, because the Haas is, well because Haas is the worst team theoretically or they came last last season, they have the um, the garage furthest towards the ends. So Mercedes are all the way at the back over here because, you know, they have the first garage because they're the best team from last season. Haas are the worst team, so they get to put their guy out first. Great execution from Haas. Get Magnussen out as early as possible on the soft tyres. Let him do one lap and then it's going to start drizzling. The rain was coming in. He can get a good lap in and see where that lands him. Now, the Ferraris went for something honestly remarkable. I've no idea even why they would try this unless they just didn't know what the weather was doing because if you put Inters on you're going to be seconds slower it's worth giving it a go on the softs because if everyone else is on the softs the track at that point was dry there was no way in the world that Leclerc was going to be quicker on Inters than he could have been on softs but for some reason Ferrari decided you know what let's put Leclerc on the Inters like if you're going to put any driver on the Inters even if you want to do that put Sainz on the Inters the guy that's going to get the penalty anyway I just don't understand this thought process everyone else came out on softs as expected Ferrari put Leclerc on the Inters, he does the outlap on the Inters, and then he got told on his radio, pull into the pits, like box, box, the Inters don't work, put the softs on. By that point, he'd already driven past the pit entry and was already doing his laps. So at that point, it was like, well, I've got to do it anyway. Perez, the poor guy, was stuck right behind him. Leclerc was on his fast lap, so he doesn't really have to let Perez through, but Perez was obviously seconds per lap faster on those softs than Leclerc was on the Inters. Eventually, Perez basically overtakes him on a quali lap towards the end of this lap here. Leclerc has to pull into the pits and put the softs on, and by the time he does, there was another incident going on. So, this is another all-time Ferrari disaster class. How do they possibly get this wrong? It was so obvious what needed to be done. All the other teams did it, right? Why do they go to Inters? You're not in a race conditions here where you're trying to preempt Inters because it's going to rain and therefore you get the pit in early. Like, that's not how it works here. It's qualifying, mate. Put those fastest tyres on at that particular moment, and if you need to put Inters on, you can come into the pits and get them later. Don't understand it. Screwed Leclerc's lap. Screwed Perez's lap. 
So they were both in a real pickle, right? And even Leclerc was on the radio saying, yeah, you know, beautiful. He actually copied uh, Verstappen's words here, right? He used the beautiful, effing beautiful line, which I thought was pretty funny, as he realizes that, yeah, everyone else was on six. I was not on six. Didn't put in a representative lap time out to put into the pits. And then this was the key moment. Down into turn four, George Russell was trying to kind of push the boundaries, went off track, smashes it through the gravel, and then comes onto the escape road, and then I think just puts the power down a bit too much. I guess that the escape road was slippier than he expected it to be. Spins the car right round into a donut, thinks the guy's still in Las Vegas, gets it sandwiched here in the gravel, and that's job done for George Russell's session. So he has to get, uh, well not airlifted, right? He gets out of the car and he's fine. The car has to get brought away. That brings out the red flag. The teams knew that, um, that the rain was coming at some point. They needed to get their first laps in quick. Their hot laps at the start were critical. There might have been one or two more laps after that where they could have gone quicker. Anything after that though, the rain was coming back and there was no way anyone was going to improve. So Russell basically, I don't know if uh, you know he wants to be on Kevin Madison's Christmas list or something, but by bidding it here and bringing out the red flags, that ended the session for the time being. And when the session eventually resumed a few minutes later with seven minutes left on the clock, the rain was obviously too heavy and there was no way the teams realized anyone was going to improve. So unbelievable turn of events. Magnussen at that point was on pole, right? The first few laps had come through. Magnussen had done a lap that was two tenths quicker than everyone else. Remarkably good lap, just because going out at that point, the first lap in those kind of new conditions at the start of Q3, no one really knew what to expect. You just got to send it for a lap and see what happens. Magnussen did the best job of the eight drivers that got a proper lap in, and Magnussen found himself on pole. Unbelievable scenes. These were the timing sheets, actually, when Russell binned it in turn four. You can see here that Perez had done a great sector one, and 18 two actually might not be, yeah, okay, you can just about see it. And then Hamilton had done pretty much green first sector as well. So yeah, Hamilton was obviously struggling out there in those particular conditions at the time, was only good enough for P8 on his first attempt. He was improving though on his second attempt, but then Russell put it in the uh, in the gravel trap and then that screwed over everyone's lap. So it's interesting really, Russell screwed over his own lap in a way, obviously, screwed over his teammate and everyone else behind Hamilton as well and did Magnussen a massive favour giving him pole position. If this had kept on going, there's a chance that Verstappen or someone would have got Magnussen probably, but just the way it worked out, Magnussen keeps pole in those crazy changeable conditions. We talked about it before that these wet conditions create stuff like this and it's just happened and what a crazy story and also this grid is really spicy as well as we shall see here in a few minutes time even as um, Roman Grosjean said here during all these shenanigans make me dream Magnussen like please hold on because at this point we didn't know whether the rain was going to go away whether the track was going to dry up enough for teams to still put some laps together Hamilton went out for one lap on the ends I think to just say hello to the crowd really but um, I mean yeah still it was clear at that point no one was going to improve and here's Kevin Magnussen with Felipe Massa uh, getting his pole sitters uh, tire right. Unbelievable storyline. Really good feel good stuff for Formula One because this season has been a season of Red Bull domination largely. Uh, several races there hasn't been too much interest. The podiums have always been apart from that one race back in um, back in Imola right when Norris got a podium there P3. Outside of that it's only been Red Bull, Ferrari, Mercedes. There's been one pole position until now that has not been a Red Bull or a Ferrari that was Russell back in Hungary and now we've got Magnussen for Haas on pole just really good stuff and it's also awesome for the sport as well and I know that when Magnussen was walking down to the pen to do his uh, pole interview the other teams the Williams guys and the Alfa Romeo guys I'm sure and you know Aston Martin were clapping him right and understandably because I'm sure they think yeah damn if Magnussen's gonna get a pole like you know it's gonna keep the momentum high in these other teams as well they're gonna think damn if he got a pole for Haas like we can get the job done as well so the team did a great job with setup just one practice session to set things up always make things a little bit more interesting in terms of which teams have nailed it which teams haven't because less time to figure out all the kinks. Haas got it right. The driver got it right. They got the conditions right. And uh, George Russell obviously did him a favor. And these then are the qualifying positions for the sprint race. That is key. Unfortunate for Magnussen in a way because it's highly unlikely he's going to be able to hold on here to survive into Sunday's race on pole. But uh, still, he gets the pole position trophy and is credited with pole position no matter what happens tomorrow. So Magnussen, Verstappen, Russell, Norris, Sainz, Ocon, Alonso, Hamilton. So Hamilton in P8 is interesting here because yes it's a sprint race last year he came from p20 to p5 in admittedly a much better car and tomorrow the conditions might be far more changeable even than they were today right who knows tomorrow it might be rain dry rain inters like wets who knows what's going to happen tomorrow maybe they call the race off or something because the FIA love to do that whenever it rains and whether Hamilton can actually carve his way through the field that's a question they'll need him to if they want Mercedes to have a good chance on Sunday but uh, I mean yeah he's got science in front of him but the positive thing for Hamilton is that he's got Perez and Leclerc behind 
Marines. So theoretically, if he can hold those guys up, carve through the field to some degree, there's a chance that Mercedes are in a decent spot tomorrow. Really tough again for Leclerc and Perez, right? They're stuck down there behind Hamilton. That's not going to be easy to make progress of the field there because Hamilton's going to be, you know, imagine right behind the Alpines. Going to be difficult for Perez or Leclerc to do much unless they get the job done on the line. Norris, what a performance as well. Must be set up to P4 here. I believe he was one of the last drivers to go out as well in Q3 and still put in a monster lap. Russell P3 and um, I mean, yeah, look, Science P5. Now he doesn't take the grid penalty tomorrow. He takes it on Sunday instead. So wherever Science finishes tomorrow's sprint race, that's a plus five for his starting position due to that new engine that he's going to get come Sunday. So yes, what a crazy situation. A Haas sandwich. P1 Magnussen, P20 Schumacher and just some other great images to say here. I mean, like, what, what is this, man? Magnussen won. Verstappen P2, Russell P3. And even just I thought this was interesting when Hulkenberg got his first pole position back in, um, I mean, what is it, 2010 or something? It was in Brazil in similar situations in a midfield car when he stuck it on pole positioning kind of on the slick tyres, I think, in drying conditions. And Magnussen did the same thing. And these guys are going to be teammates next season. So another interesting storyline to keep your eyes on. But very much enjoy your thoughts in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. Take care. And I'll see you next time.